Hi and welcome to Subotica, a beautiful city in northern Serbia, uh, right at the border to Hungary. And this uh, city is quite special because uh, it has lots of Art Nouveau influence, obviously lots of influence from the neighboring country Hungary and lots of history. And I'm going to go on a walking tour now and we're going to explore Subotica. Let's check it out. Hi everybody and welcome to Subotica, Serbia. In this Serbia travel vlog, I'm going to take you through this beautiful city in Europe which still seems left out of major tourist maps. So if you're interested in cities to see in Europe that are affordable places to visit and yet get history in Eastern Europe, Subotica is a perfect place to visit in Europe. Subotica is located in the Vojvodina region of northern Serbia, close to the Hungarian border. It has a population of close to 100,000. What makes Subotica so unique are the many buildings built in the Art Nouveau style. The city hall, which was completed in 1910, and the synagogue from 1902 are particularly beautiful and we will have a closer look at them later. Given its close proximity to Hungary, there are clear Hungarian influences in terms of architecture and food that reminded me of my trip to Hungary, which I recommend you check out if you haven't watched my travel videos on Hungary yet. In this Serbia travel video, I will take you on a travel walking tour through what I think is one of the nicest places to visit in Europe. I will show you my top 10 things to see in Subotica, Serbia and give you some additional bonus tips for dinner at the end of the video. Here's a map of the tour with all the major landmarks we will see. This video has chapters, so feel free to jump to the segments you will find most useful. But let's get started right away with our tour through one of the most beautiful places in Serbia. Number 1. Reichlit Palace, the modern art museum. My tour starts at the green park that is opposite the train station. This is a natural starting point if you arrive in Subotica by train from Belgrade or Budapest. On the opposite side of the train station you will see Reichle Palace, one of the most beautiful Art Nouveau buildings of the city and possibly of the entire country. Reichle Palace is named after its designer, Franz Reichle. The palace was built in 1904 and was intended at the time as the architect's home and studio. The colorful arabesque patterns on the facade, the loggia and an intricate gable and the glazed roof tiles make the building a true architectural gem. Nowadays the building is home to the Modern Art Museum of Subotica with 1200 works of modern art from the second half of the 20th century in the permanent collection alongside temporary exhibitions. Tip number two, Corso Pedestrian Street. If you walk through one of the beautiful interior courts and down a small but lively alleyway, which comes really alive at night, you will get to my second tip for Subotica, which is the beautiful Corso Street. Corso Street is a pedestrianized boulevard that is lined with Art Nouveau buildings that house restaurants, cafes and shops. Walking along the street, you cannot help but feel like you're walking through an architecture museum with the many colorful decorated facades. Most of them are held in the Hungarian secessionist style that dates to the end of the 19th century and beginning of the 20th century. Number 3. Trek Slobode, the Freedom Square. If you continue on Corso Street, you will see an imposing neoclassical building on your left hand side. This is the National Theatre of Subotica and one of several remarkable buildings on Trek Slobode, or Freedom Square. Freedom Square is the beating heart of the city and a favorite meeting place of locals. At the center of the square stands a statue of Jovan Nenad, the Serbian leader who, following the defeat of the Hungarians in Mohac by the Ottomans, created the independent kingdom in present-day Vojvodina in 1527. On the southern end of the square, you will see a beautiful fountain that is particularly worth seeing in the evening when it's lit in changing colorful lights.
Number four, Subodica Library. Just behind the fountain, you will see the yellow Art Nouveau building of the Subodica City Library. The building formerly housed the National Casino and stands out through its beautiful side with the entrance flanked by atlases that carry the floor balcony. It's yet another excellent example of the creative talent of Franz Reichle, who designed the building in 1896. Number 5. Subodica City Hall Let's get to the most famous building of Subodica, the magnificent City Hall. It's a must-see in Subodica and it's worth coming here only to see this Jugendstil building with your own eyes. Completed in 1912, it stands tall over the rest of the city and serves as a point for orientation for visitors. This imposing building is one of the best examples of Art Nouveau architecture I've seen anywhere and needless to say, it makes for great pictures. It is possible to book tours on the inside on Sundays and visitors can go up to the tower platform which provides a great view of the city. But even if you don't go inside, the outside of the building with its many colorful decorations and ornamentation is spectacular enough. It's a secession style masterpiece. I cannot help but note that I found the McDonald's at the corner of Freedom Square somewhat out of place in this historic monument. A nice historic cafe might have been more fitting, but I guess that's a sign of the times. This franchise restaurant certainly wins the place of the most beautiful location of a McDonald's I've seen anywhere in the world. Number 6. Plava Fontana Just on the other side of the city hall you will enter a tree-lined park which is dominated by a giant blue spring fountain, the Plava Fontana. The blue fountain gets its color from the blue ceramic tiles that were used for its design. The fountain is lined with park benches that invite for a rest and take in the relaxed atmosphere. Alternatively, you can sit in one of the cafes around the park which also offer a nice view of the fountain. Just make sure you come during the summer months as the fountain is covered up during winter. Number 7. St. Theresa of Avila Cathedral Walking along Matka Bukovica, you will get to another large square, the Square of the Victims of Fascism, with a big Second World War memorial monument at its center. On the far side, you will see St. Theresa of Avila Cathedral. Suporica's Roman Catholic Cathedral is a nice example of late Baroque design. Completed in 1779, the church has been renovated a number of times since, but always kept its original design. Unfortunately, the church may be in need of another renovation, as a big crack is visible in its facade, which almost looks like the historic church may fall apart into two pieces very soon. Let's continue our walk past the Victims of Fascism monument to our next destination, the Suporica Synagogue. Number 8. Subotica Synagogue The synagogue stands out as yet another example of splendid Art Nouveau architecture with its beautiful colorful ornamentation. 
The design of the building is unique in the region, as its steel frame gave the architects much more creative freedom to experiment with new design features. The interior is equally, if not more impressive, and can be visited for a small fee. Number 9. The Mlechna Pijatsa, Farmer's Market. Just behind the synagogue, you will see the entrance of Mlechna Pijatsa, Subodica's central farmer's market. I always make it a point to visit farmer's markets when I visit a new city. The sights and smells of Mlechna Pijatsa don't disappoint. Here you will find anything from fresh flowers, veggies and greens, fruits, nuts, spices, and of course fresh dairy products and meats. The atmosphere is relaxed and the price is much lower than in supermarkets. The shopping experience here is certainly priceless and the market makes for both great memories and great pictures. And then half a kilo of this. Half, yes. Tip number 10, Lake Palic. For my next tip, we head a bit outside the city center to Lake Palic. Lake Palic is a summer getaway of choice for many people living in Soporica. Located in an old affluent suburb, the lake provides a nice nature oasis close to the city. The many Art Nouveau style buildings and pretty flower beads are reminiscent of turn of the century resorts. People began to flock to the lake's shores in the 1880s to bathe in the mud, which was ascribed healing qualities and subsequently a grand terrace, women's lido and water tower were built in Hungarian secessionist style to accommodate the visitors. On warm days you can stroll on the promenade, lay on the lake beach or take a swim in the lake. Alternatively, possibilities for sailing, canoeing or fishing are also on offer. So these are my top 10 tips for Subodica, but as promised, I have a bit of a bonus. Subodica is also well known for its excellent cuisine. The food in northern Serbia has some Hungarian influence and goulash, the yummy meat and vegetable stew, is on the menu of many places. You will also find other Hungarian inspired dishes such as chicken paprikas and variations of percurled beef stew offered in local restaurants. If you are interested to learn more about Hungarian dishes, please check out my Hungarian food video. And if you are curious about Serbian food, I have made an extensive video on my favorite dishes and snacks in Serbia too. Many of the typical Serbian dishes can of course be found in Subodica too. 
How about some nice chivapi or fresh burek filled with mincemeat, cheese or spinach? A great place to go out at night in Subodica is Matije Corvina Street, where you'll find several hip bars and restaurants that are worth checking out. I had excellent food in Bos Cafe, Stara Pizzeria and Pizzeria Renaissance that have a wide selection of dishes on their menus. And to close off this video, here's a last bonus tip. Take a night walk through Subodica and experience this beautiful city at night. It's a special atmosphere and all the historic buildings and fountains are lit up. Check this out. So these are my favorite things to do in Subotica, Serbia. I hope you found this Serbia travel video on this amazing city in northern Serbia helpful and it provided some inspiration for your next travel in Eastern Europe and Serbia. Let me know in the comments below about any additional tips that are not covered on my trip and please also check out my other travel videos in beautiful Serbia where I cover many more fantastic places in Serbia and of course many other amazing travel destinations. And leave me a like down below and if you haven't done so yet please subscribe to my channel and I look forward to seeing you in my next travel video. Have a good one. Bye bye.